We've got Emma Grace, pronoun she and they, um, calling in from Scratchy Cats, uh, who is a theist who is an ex-missionary, calling back about how Western thought continues to perpetuate colonialism, wanting humanist perspectives from the hosts about the ethnocentrism that we hold in our educational models that limit humanity's ability to move on to a more equitable world. That's a hell of a like, prompt. Like That's a fantastic call screen. Emma Grace, you're on the line. How are you doing today? I am doing all right. Um, I'm glad to hear it. I feel like I lost some brain cells on that last call. Um, it was rough. So, yeah, just prefacing this by saying I don't think I talked about it last time, that I'm not just seeking advice from two white or white passing strangers on the internet about this. I'm like also drinking tea and breaking bread with my community and mutual aid networks. But I do really think that casting a wide net, picking the brains of scientists and humanists and ex-evangelicals since that part of available community around me is very small almost non-existent is helpful even yeah. if it's not like my priority number one opinion that i'm going to take um sure but yeah. you you were like come back and tell me if you figure out how to make things less weird in mm -hmm. uh global aid work and stuff. And I think it's going to be weird until there's less capitalism uh, and epistemic violence in education um, around the world. That's what a lot of people have been saying. And that like report that you shared is like, um, kind of just coming down to capitalism and resource leverage in control, so what else is new? But like, I've seen bad faith actors, both religious and irreligious, kind of independent of that. And so the sticky point that I have that I would like to hear from y'all is that like colleagues or uh, international students or workers in the Global South and other indigenous groups being forced to comport with the ideals of like Western research methodologies and scientific models. And like even the report that you shared mentioned how it's decisions to be published in a certain style of report are because it's the norm for donors and it's considered by mm -hmm. the West to be more formal. And so mm -hmm. I just, I have trouble with a little bit of a skeptical worldview in the majority of the world is being forced to comport with our scientific models and ideals. Sure. Um, so here's where I would sit on it is that it's absolutely no secret that science and, 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 you know, our history of aid work, what we called aid work and things like this, um, have a, a, da a dark, long, deep history of sexism, racism, colonialism, like that's, that is no news to anybody who's paying attention. Um, it also shouldn't be news that science works and it works mm -hmm. because of our ability to get out of our own way and learn about the natural world rather than what it, for what it is, rather than what we want it to be. Um, and the history of especially the last century in science has been going back and finding problems in our research where we were being sexist, racist assholes and glossing over, covering up, or destroying evidence that went against our Western framework. And that's why, you know, nowadays you, you hear it more and more and more when people talk about, oh, this isn't real science. This is this modern woke science. And back in the 60s, it was very clear that this was how the phrenology worked. You know, and I was like, no, actually, it never worked. You're just an idiot. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, as we go through, you know, we, we find all these problems. And we try to correct for them. We try to make things better. We try to ameliorate these situations and we learn more stuff. And a big part of that is bringing people from other cultures, from other backgrounds, other heuristics, other mental frameworks into the sciences, out reaching out to them on their terms, in their language, in their framework, and having them use the scientific method to learn new cool stuff. It's why you see all the time, like, hey, this person from 
pick a random place in South Asia has discovered this crazy new thing about mathematics that they just were able to do as effortlessly as any Western person was able to do whatever calculus because they had a different angle at which they were approaching the problem from their, their heuristics, their cultural perspective. Um, and so I think that like, it would be, in my opinion, it would be foolish to try to denounce all scientific progress and say that we need to completely reinvent the entire endeavor of science. I think that it makes more sense to say we need to make science as inclusive as possible. We need to decolonize science in such a way that we are not forcing people, as you mentioned, to adhere to a Western framework in order to get the funding they need. But we also need to make sure that science is being done properly and that the things that be, you know, whatever people, whoever they may be, are coming up with are still backed by solid evidence and re sound reason. Um, whatever ontology you're coming up from. Well, this this last summer, we had a whole thing about um, uh, Native American ontologies and how they comport with science. And it works because they are bringing their framework into the scientific world, not changing the scientific world to match their framework. That would be no different than saying, uh, you know, the Institute of Creation Research or Answers in Genesis who bend science to fit the Bible. You know, so like that's that's where I'm at with it. I think that, yeah, I think there's a lot to be done and a lot of work, uh, a lot of work to be done and a lot to be said about decolonizing education, stopping as I love your words there, epistemic violence, telling people you have to learn in this way and you have to use these examples. There's a reason why at, at a collegiate level we have like stats for social sciences versus stats for medical science versus stats for this, that the same fucking stats. You just teach them in different ways for different people who are coming from different angles. Um, it can and should be the exact same thing. Teach this in a way that works for you. Learn this in a way that works for you. Then get into the lab, put a code on, and start working in a way that that makes sense for everybody. That's that's my idea. But I know that's a lot of flowery language. Skeptical heretic, do you have thoughts on this? I don't. I don't feel like I'm very experienced in that like realm. That's okay. Honestly, that's totally fine. It's 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 a weird situation. Emma Grace. Does, does any of this resonate with you or do you think I'm missing something? I have a question about like the scientist in wherever in Southeast Asia who discovers something in their own culture, in their own way. Why does mm -hmm. their report style and their methodologies have to be reported in the same way that we do in the West? Yeah. So I, I think the, like, when you really dig into the literature, like there, there's kind of a general framework. It's not terribly specific. I do think that reporting like a method section is the best thing to do. I don't think it has to be exactly word for word, you know, line for line, the same as, as what we have to do in the West. But you do have to tell me what you did, why you did it and how you did it so that I can replicate it. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I have no problem at all with saying, Hey, of, yeah, go ahead. There's just a lot of, uh, hierarchy and uh more credence and expertise given to people who do it in certain manners and so that and creates that fucking more, sucks. more work for yeah that sucks and, and, and there is a there is a lot to be said about that as well because like there's that is a major complaint with like a lot of stuff in higher ed where it's like you didn't actually do anything that interesting you just took something you could have explained in one sentence and explained it in 10 pages and that's what we value for some fucking reason. I can tell you all throughout grad school, it was that like, yes, this is perfectly explained. I need this to be five pages longer. Find a way to make it five pages longer because that's the way it has to be. And there are a lot of scientists out there that are trying to ar that are arguing that we should be not doing that because it 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 stops the democratization of science. It makes it much more difficult to get people excited about science if they can't even read it if they if they don't know what's going on and so yeah i think that actually benefits everybody is making this you know more palatable for everybody plain english make it super specific and esoteric when it needs to be but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be written in a way so that an old white man with a long white beard and a big white coat and some ivory tower will feel like he's learned enough erudite knowledge for the edification of great experts and all that 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 doesn't have to happen 
Um, but it does have to be reported in a way that makes sense and that can follow along with like good scientific methodology later on. That's, that's my point. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I could ask skeptical heretic a question, um, just not even globally, but even locally, uh, for you, uh, how have you been confronting ethnocentrism with white supremacy and Christo fascism that you've deconstructed um, and been able to work on combating that when it that just Christian hegemony that you grew up with comes up in you? So to be honest, I feel like I'm pretty far behind because the entire time I was a evangelical, which was up until like two years ago, um, I didn't even know. I didn't even know the term Christian nationalists. I didn't know fascists like I did, but like I didn't know really how uh, voting certain ways contributed to that. And so first I deconstructed in a political way where I'm like, hey, this is especially Christian nationalism is really a disgusting way to go about things. When you think about people other than yourself for two seconds, um, which I did before um, becoming an atheist, but it was actually interesting to see the amount of um, the amount of Christians who do not allow you to be Christian and allow you to like denounce things like Christian nationalism in the evangelical space. Um, because that's yeah. what got me to start questioning in the first place was the politics were getting very heated um, when it came to people being like very, very. And that's always been a thing. But I guess the Christian nationalism and the fascism was just becoming more blatant and more outspoken. Um, and so there's just a lot I've had to deconstruct there as to why did I believe that my belief system was superior and why did I believe that? it was okay for me to think that it was okay to like take away people's rights. Um, that was like a really hard thing to deconstruct. And I don't, I think there are a lot of Christians out there who are like me and don't realize because they've been indoctrinated in it their whole life. They don't realize what Christian nationalism really is and how they're contributing to it. Because I have a lot of Christians I actually interact with that are like, what are you talking about? Like what, what is that? And that's concerning, though, because they are participating, participating in it. There are a lot who know they are, but there's a lot who I think are just very heavily. It's one hell of a drug indoctrination. So it's a struggle. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there are certain things. I mean, the the best way I know how to put it is I was just constantly um, when I was deconstructing that I was constantly trying to put myself in other people's positions, even if I knew nothing about those positions um, was really important to me because I was also working for a company where I was meeting people from so many different backgrounds and so many different um, so many different races, so many different genders, so many different um, sexualities that it really opened my eyes while I was a Christian to you know, what I was really believing and what I was really supporting. So that had a lot to do with my deconstruction with that. That's uh, uh, something I remember. Um, Rhett and Link, the, the people from Good Mythical Morning, they they talked about that a lot. They were, they were super Christian, and then they were working in L.A., you know, doing this show, and they're like, you know, I, we had all these people on the show that were gay or, or lesbian or, or trans or whatever, and I'd really loved this guy that was gay and i hug him and i'm like i love you and i meant that and then i had to go away and remember oh shit i'm he's supposed to go to hell. i'm supposed to not like that guy he's supposed to go to hell i'm supposed i believe huh and that was a major thing in their deconstruction they were like this i can't sustain this hate and now i've got to figure out what's left when that's gone and there's not a lot and like yeah dude that's why a big part of the woke agenda is to force uh, black people into more video games and stuff and then distribute them around the world like Neil deGrasse Tyson does or whatever the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> well, yeah, part of why I left evangelicalism and stuff like that had to do with that as well of teaching English to tons of refugees and writing curriculums overseas and just stuff like that and meeting people with other points of view, which is why I think it's good to get other points of view and 
pass the wide net with questions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I think that's fantastic. It, it, it really like that's that's the whole point of you know, to circle back to education. That's that is the point of education. Like it's 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 not about teaching you what to think. It's about teaching you how to think. And and more importantly, I think especially as you go higher and higher in education, it's not about just memorizing shit. It is about being exposed to different ideas and different ideals and different ideologies and different people and different places and different cultures and different people, like all these different things. That's why it's it's a university. It's a university is a universal experience. Um, and that's the most important part of higher education. People who go through their whole you know, college career and come out the same person they are as when they went in, they didn't study hard enough. Those people got it, got an F in going to college. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, most Christian nationalists I know are people who support Christian nationalism, whether they label themselves that or not, are people who have never left like their small hometown. And that's like the struggle is you can't you can't give people your experiences. You can't force people to want to learn more, to want to meet different people. And that can be pretty frustrating. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, Emma Grace, uh, as always, I yeah. appreciate your calls. Do you have anything else you wanted to bring up to us or to chat with us about? I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay. I'm going to ask you again. I think I asked you this last time, but just in case you are calling into the theist, would you like to talk about what God you believe in and why, or are you not interested right now? I'm not going to force you to. I don't think you asked that. Um, okay. Well, consider it an I invitation as always. Find, I find the story of a teacher from an oppressed minority being prosecuted by religious leaders and then executed by an imperial state compelling as a scapegoat allegory, but I don't know. And, and that resonates across many cultures. Like you were talking with the last caller. Um, yeah, but probably not magical. I don't know. And death, but definitely not the like penal substitutionary theory of atonement that I was taught and taught to teach other people and save people from hell. It it's insane how far ahead of the curve you are, Emma Grace. I, I I wonder why you're still a theist. I genuinely do, and I mean that in a good way. Like it's it sounds like you really I don't know, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of sitting on a fence and paling myself, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's part of it. I, I think genuinely, I mean this, I think you are probably one of the most thoughtful callers that we've ever had on the show, or at least as long as I've been here. Um, and I think that I I think you're a very good person. And I think that the way you think about these things is indicative of somebody who really genuinely cares about other people. Um, and I think that facts matter to you. And I think that evidence matters to you. And if you're already on the fence about this stuff, I'm not going to try to push you. Um, I think that secularism and skepticism and humanism are already interests for you and i think eventually you'll be comfortable enough to just put away this the uh, theism and 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 move on to a different part of your life we're here for you if you want to talk about it if you ever want to poke something if you're like hey just kind of hung up on this one thing you know what how do i get over you we're here to help you fuck with it and if or Recovering from Religion also has a tremendous amount of, of judgment-free, really cool uh, resources and, and uh, counselors and stuff that'll help you out with it. Um, and I look forward to the day when when you're revolutionizing education and and getting your EDD and going out there and changing the shape of education and, and, and decolonializing our, our way of bringing people in and getting people aid work and all sorts of things like that. All of that is is just an awesome. I, even if you stay a theist the whole time, I don't give a shit. You're just a cool person, Emma Grace, and I wish the best for you. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. All right, up to you. Bye. Emma Grace is super cool. She called in once before oh, with uh, nice. similar questions. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. Hey, what's up? I'm glad you enjoyed that clip of uh, people talking to each other. I'm Jimmy, and this is Eric. And well, we'd really love it if you would support us. Where can they support us, Eric? Where would they do that? Uh, you know, I don't know, Jimmy, because I don't have the notes on me right now. This is but too long. Like the Patreon. outros have to be short. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash call the line.